Hello everybody, Prowl here, sitting by the campfire of what's soon becoming our last days here at the starter base. Although I'm sure we'll probably visit it every so often. But we're here at Minecraft Bedrock Guide 1.21, and I'm headed on over to where we're going to be doing our starting stuff. Because see, we're going to be getting primed up, prepped up, ready to go for an iron farm trading hall coming up in the next couple of episodes. Not today because we kind of need to get our base area ready today. And as I run over here, I wanted to address a side note question that I'm asked all the time, which is how do you like stay motivated in a world? I get people coming to me all the time saying, I, you know, I get tired of my world after a day or two or after I beat the Ender Dragon or whatever. And I'm going to tell you one of the best ways you can stay motivated for your world is coming up with a cool base plan. I've gone over mine a little bit, but come up with an idea of what you want to do for a base. Maybe it's a town. Maybe it's a city. Maybe it's a castle. Maybe it's a mega base that you got inspiration from watching another creator, whatever. Figure out, generally speaking, what it is that you want to do and then make a small list of things that you want to do to get to that point. That's actually kind of what I do when I plan my episodes out. I have a, a episode list and each one is like something new that I'm accomplishing and that helps make me feel like I'm making progress each and every day, each and every step I take to my ultimate goal of finishing my base. Now, here's the issue that I have with this area, with our, like our, our main base area that we're going to be doing here is we need to prep the area to actually have stuff go here now, I don't want everything to be totally flat because that's kind of boring. But at the same time, like this land, this land is not. What the? Come here. Ow. I'm getting, I'm getting ganged up on. This land here is not very well suited to do hardly anything with. And there's two ways that I could go about doing this. Way number one is. I could just do it a piece at a time, right? I want to put a building right here. I cut out two trees, three trees, whatever, and plop the building down right here. But I have a fear that if I do that, I could do that and think, oh man, this area down here is like really far down. I might have to lower this area down, but I already put a building up here. So I think I want to do a little bit more to this. If we fly and look above here, what we're going to end up doing with this area is making it an island. I've loved this idea of making this an island from the start because it gives me a reason to build a bridge, basically. Um, and it, it kind of looks like it wanted to be one anyways. So I think we're going to do a couple things to prepare our base area for the upcoming episodes that we're going to be doing stuff in it. I think what we're going to do is we're going to chop all the trees down. We're going to smoothen out the land. We're not going to flatten it. We're going to smoothen it. We're going to cut the land off right here giving us room to make a bridge and i don't know if i'm going to go this far i almost want to do that with this too um it's a smaller area but it could definitely fit something and it's basically already an island and then another thing i think i want to do this is this is going to be a big project and i don't know if we're going to do all of this right away but i kind of want to fill all of this low-lying area in with dirt to make our island that much bigger because we basically have land there already. Why not claim and get the rest of it? Now, this is a lot of dark oak and this is going to take a long time for me to chop it all down. Um, I might leave the mushrooms. I kind of like I kind of like them being there. Oh, gosh, here we go. Look, these guys just don't they don't know how to leave me alone. Um, so we'll see how I do or what I do with that. But it's going to take a while to chop all this down. So I think rather than doing this by myself in typical prowl fashion, I'm going to make this a live stream. And for any of you guys that joined me, thank you. And any of you guys that didn't, make sure you catch my live streams because we talk about all sorts of cool things while I sit here and brainlessly chop trees for hours on end. Um, and then once the trees are all down, then together we'll talk about doing some of this river portion. We'll talk about flattening the land out and other preparatory is that a word Pre preparatory things that we need to do to get this area ready and i don't know 
we'll probably light the area up to i don't know we're gonna do we're gonna do a lot of different things but for now i'm just gonna go in tree shopping mode and chopping is what i did we fired up a couple of live streams over the course of a couple days for a total of almost seven hours and we chopped and chopped and chop some more and some more and finally a little bit more and for comparison this is where we started and now we're here and not only are we here i got the whole place lit up so we don't have to worry about mobs and you can kind of see why i did things actually if i were to fly up in the air here just to show you we have we have some not so easy to work with terrain honestly the whole area wasn't too bad off but we lose a lot of space right through here without me doing some terraforming. And also another thing I noticed that I don't like, and I'm gonna regret saying this, but I'm gonna say it right now anyways, is I really don't like how tall this is. It doesn't just feel like an island or what will eventually be an island. It's kind of like a, a tall floaty island. It's so much taller than the area out here. So I think what we're gonna have to do to really make this thing fit what we need here is I'm gonna have to dig either the whole thing down a, a lot or round out the edges. So I think what we're gonna do is I'm gonna work on rounding out the edges of this thing first, and then I'm gonna take things from there and see, I guess see if I'm gonna need to bring the whole thing down too, or if just rounding off the edges is gonna work because I really just don't, I don't like how tall it is compared to everything else out here. It just feels kind of weird. It just, it feels kind of weird. And I guess one thing I probably should do is, I, we're gonna talk about terraforming multiple times through this series, but one thing that I try to do when I terraform land is honestly, I don't think about it too much. I know I want a like smoother gradient here, right? A smoother slope. I don't want it to just be so tall. So what I kind of do is I like just angle my shovel up a bit and I just kind of swing around at a general angle. And then in doing that, it, it kind of gets me the slope I'm looking for right off the bat. And then after I do this method to just carve away a lot of the land that I need to get the slope, then I'll go through and kind of do some of those like finer details to get it to look, I guess, prettier in a way to, to give it that smoother to give it that smoothness that I want in the end. So just a little bit of advice for you. Don't be scared to tackle what is a big project like this, because if you do it in the right way, it really doesn't take that long and it's going to end up looking really good. Um, I'll bring you guys in in a moment. Once I just have this front little area done so I can see what it looks like when I have a bit of a slope on it. And, you know, as I've been doing this, I've kind of noticed another thing, too. Remember when I said one of the things we're going to do is make this an island as well? Well, the water kind of comes in right here and I started I started doing a slope right here. That's not really going to work because I'm going to have the water, I think, cut across this part since that's kind of where it is. And then, man, it's got to go all the way over there. Um, yeah, this is going to change things for me a little bit. Um, I need to like. I need to like chop this thing off like right here ish and and actually just dig all of this out and then we're gonna have to smooth it out from here going up okay um this um this is this is becoming this is becoming quite quite the task i really wish we had a beacon but we're not that far in yet i'm not gonna just go get one right now because we we have to like go through doing everything in the nether and we got to get our first beacon together we gotta we gotta do all that that's a lot of episodes to do so i guess i'm just gonna get the chopping and um we'll we'll come back on the other side of having a place for the river to go we probably won't do the river right now but we'll at least know exactly where the river's going to carve through. Whew, okay, that was a long, not super long, but it felt like a really long live stream. There's a creeper here. We cannot leave any creeper alive because that would be bad. Um, And I, I this used to be the, that big hillside. I think it was maybe like right here or so. So I built it down some. I, I carved it up some. It looks good. And I cut out the area in which our water is going to flow through. I'll probably tweak it a little bit, but at least this side of it looks good. That's going to need a lot of terraforming through there. And of course, we're going to have to dig it down. Don't think I really care too much about that for this episode because it's not really needed for what I need to do up here to further prepare our area 
for a main base to go. And that is the main problem I had with this area to begin with, which is the terrain is kind of rough around the edges, especially over here. So I want to do a few things to smoothen out the terrain. And a big tip that I have for you guys that are maybe trying to accomplish something similar is to not go too drastic one way or the other. You don't want to leave. You don't want to have big drastic dip, dips into the ground like this because it's kind of hard to build on and utilize in a build in some way. But also you don't want to completely flatten it either because that's just boring and it's um, it's not going to make your it's not going to like assist your builds or help your builds and looking good. So what I'm going to do, for example, like this area right here is kind of crazy um, and I can get some some like really good usable land out of this and probably this area right here. So I, I'm going to go kind of like crazy with what I'm doing here, I think, and how much uh, I I change the way that this looks. But I have a lot of blocks from all that I cut out over there. So I think we're good. And I think I'm going to kind of like draw a line from here going across to there. And then that's going to kind of set like a new area for me. This is a uh, it's kind of weird how it's picking where to go here. But yeah, I think I'm going to draw a line across here to connect it up and we might smoothen it out or change it a little bit once I get it in. Uh, but that's going to get me a lot more surface area here and it will have plenty of room to kind of slowly ramp it down here. Or honestly, this is usually the easier way to do this. So I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it this way is maybe I start from the bottom and then we work our way up to there. Um, so that'll probably involve me doing some like basic tweaking around the edges here just to get some smoother lines. I like to try to keep a lot of the like natural terrain, uh, like terrain generation, because I feel like that helps the overall build look more natural. Um, but at the same time, and also I guess like when I put these lines in like this, honestly, I, I really just spam blocks quite a bit. Um, that way it, it never really looks too planned and it almost kind of comes across in a very, uh, like it, it looks natural in the way that it lays out and then I'll come through at the end and I'll kind of smoothen it out a little bit and make sure it kind of like has flows to it that makes sense and edges that aren't too sharp and that sort of thing. So let me do that and then I'll show you guys what it looks like. Here's your before we do anything and here's where we've gotten uh, a lot of work. Not too bad. It's about turn night time, so I need to go sleep. Um, but I'm noticing now and again, like. I, the whole focus of this is like we need to make this a good starter area to our main base and I'm noticing a number of things that are let's say taking up some like good real estate giving me some space that is not like greatly usable when it comes to making a base placing buildings down doing decorating like all of that sort of thing right let's take our bed up because I want to bring it out this way so one of those things is like there's a lot of terrain differentiation here and if you were to take a look at things, let's kind of zoom out really quick so you can see. A lot of this area, this is just not usable at all. And probably the easiest way I can make a lot of this usable is if I just lower all of this by like maybe three or four layers or something of that nature. And then we need to get rid of a lot of these dips and valleys and that sort of stuff. So we're gonna fill in some of the holes we're going to chop off a lot of the top and we're going to end up with a fairly flat area at the very top of here, I think. And hopefully, maybe, possibly that gives us a good area to work with. OK, I've gotten a small chunk of this done on stream and I'm about to do some more on stream, but I, I felt the need to bring you guys in because I kind of discovered as I was doing this something that if you're going to try a similar thing to plant a custom forest that I think you'll find useful. And, and what it is, is two things. First of all, this is a dark oak forest. So I want things to stay kind of dark. I like to have a lot of overlap with the leaves, uh, which I do have. But I have little gaps to let some sunshine come through. And I have some gaps that are maybe a little bit larger than I want. I might come back in later sometime and fill that in manually with some leaves just to kind of close in some of those gaps. But here's the big thing I've noticed that I've been doing as I've been going through. And that's paying attention to sight lines. Every once in a while, I don't know if we have any right now, maybe one starting to develop right here. Anytime as I like look through here, if I have a place that looks like it's a tunnel, like um, 
like I could just see straight through one side to the other with no trees in in like my line of sight. I, I, I kind of go in and just immediately correct that. So I've done a pretty good job at doing it. So I can't really find many of these. Maybe that one we saw just a minute ago is the only one that's starting to develop right now. But let me show you what I do as, as that happens. So I find it and that's this line of sight right here. Right. So I want to make sure I, I start to block this off some, which means I'm going to put a tree. Um, I don't know, like I'm trying to say like anywhere from like four to like seven or so blocks between trees roughly it's just an estimate i'm not like counting blocks or anything i'll do something like go right here and then i'll kind of look and say okay how do i want this tree to line up with these other trees so that way they're staggered they don't look like they're in rows in any sense so i think i'm gonna go this way that offsets it from this tree and this tree and then we will build out this way and this will cover this line of sight. So now I can move over. I can place my dark oak saplings like so. I can bone meal it up. I can run out of bone meal and bone meal it up again. And then hop down, fill it in like so. And then now that line of sight is blocked. So if I come through here, I can't see down that entire lane now until I get to about here, at which point I kind of my vision hits this tree right here. So it's something little, but I think it's going to make a lot of sense. And it's going to make the forest look and feel more natural once we get to the point of the whole thing being uh, put together. Otherwise, I could get the whole forest in and then stand way down here and look and just like see a huge gap right there because I've planted all the trees on both sides in a row. So we've avoided that. I'm going to continue to go through and plant these things in. I have not gotten as far as I would like. I've maybe like an eighth of the way through. This is going to take a lot of hours to get done. Um... But it's going to look so amazing when it's done to have our custom, what I'm calling an old growth dark oak forest. And there we go. It is all done. Sorry if my voice sounds a little under the weather. I am under the weather right now. Um, This was about 18 hours of very repetitive work, which I typically don't do very good with. But it is finally done. And let me tell you, it looks absolutely magnificent. It This is amazing. This is our old growth dark oak biome, dark oak forest that we have. And the only like uh, asterisks I'll put to this right now for you guys is I know it feels a little empty-ish, but that's because this is only phase one. Phase two, we might like, like put little like, like bushes like hanging off the sides of some of these or something like that. Um, like kind of like their low-lying limbs or something. Um, we'll add in the eventual um, stumps to maybe not all of them, but a number of them, right? Where we have little, little like stumps, roots, looks like they're coming off. Maybe even get some actual root blocks. Um, there'll be bushes and moss bits scattered throughout. Then, of course, there'll be pathways going through. There'll be like buildings in here. So it'll fill up pretty quick. We still have mushrooms. I took, I ended up taking out all the mushrooms. Um, because I think we'll either custom plant some mushrooms in here, which I don't know that will work really well, or we'll probably like make some actual custom mushrooms and put them in to fill some of like the biggest gap areas and maybe even do some like some like small like dark oak trees look like they're sprouting. They're sprouting up. Um, also, you'll notice that the leaves are a little bit darker now for dark oak. I downloaded a texture pack just to make them darker. I did this while I was just getting saplings it made it a little bit easier when i went out to a dark oak forest like way out that way to get saplings to tell which ones were dark oak and i kind of like it i like the fact that dark oak and oak leaves are a different color with this basic resource pack so i think we're gonna keep it i don't know you guys let me know i think we'll keep it um i think it looks good it fits the trees very well it makes it feel more dark i guess and this is how things look from the outside as you kind of pan through and look in I like it's nice and full. I don't like the vines being this dense on the trees. You know, maybe if it was single vines coming down or something, but like the fact that the vines cover the entire tree is actually really annoying. So I'm going to have to get rid of that or change that in some way. And this is your view from above. It looks really good. We got little holes in the canopy, any like really big holes in the canopy. I might go in and fill in, but there's not many of them. Like for the most part, it looks really good. So that's going to be it for today's episode. If you enjoyed this one, if you like how the Dark Oak Forest turned out, please give me a like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.